All right, hello everybody. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at this neat little Laplace transform identity for improper integrals, which says that if you have the integral from zero to infinity of the product of two functions, I'll just call them f and g, it's really the same thing as the improper integral from zero to infinity of the Laplace transform of f times the inverse Laplace transform of g. And um, I don't know if this identity has a name, but it's really quite a, quite a nice one because it's kind of like these two Laplace transform balancing each other out. So let's just jump straight into it. I'm going to, first of all, um, rewrite this left-hand side a bit. So in order to prove this, we're just going to be starting from the left-hand side and then trying to kind of manipulate things a little bit to get to this right hand side right here. So with this left hand side, I'm gonna start by rewriting this as the integral over r plus zero to infinity because we're gonna be dealing with this interval a lot um, of f of, and I'm gonna change the variables, let's call it f of phi, and um, we're gonna multiply that by g of the same variable phi like so. And of course we have a d phi on the ends. All right, and uh, where can we go from here? What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a substitution. Um, not the usual substitution that we're useful, but we're going to define g as the Laplace transform of some other function. So if we just let, for example, g of our phi right here be exactly the Laplace transform of some other function, we'll call it h, and let's choose a new variable, gamma, and we want this Laplace transform to be in terms of phi, of course. So we still have our phi right here. And uh, well, what exactly does this mean right here? If we now take the inverse Laplace transform of G, that's going to give us our H of gamma back. So our H of gamma is really the exact same thing as the inverse Laplace transform of our G of phi, like so. And of course, this is with respects to gamma. And we're gonna be using this later on. But for now, let's just substitute this first line in. So now we have the integral over r plus of f of phi, and now our g of phi. That's exactly the Laplace transform of h of gamma with respects to our phi and d phi like so. All right, and now we can use the integral definition of the Laplace transform to expand this out further. So now we have the integral over r plus of f of phi and now this Laplace transform that's exactly the integral from zero to infinity or r plus again of this function right here h of gamma and we're going to multiply that by e to the minus and the Laplace transform variable in this case is our phi so we're going to have minus phi and then our integration variable which is gamma in this case and then we have a d gamma. So in this Laplace transform right here, our initial variable is gamma and we're moving over to phi. So that's why we're integrating with respects to gamma right here because our gamma's root will disappear in the integration, leaving us with just this phi. And then of course we have a d phi at the end as well. So d phi right here. All right, so now notice that this inner integral, that's with respects to gamma, which means that we can actually bring this f of phi in because it's not with respects to gamma, it's just like a constant. So if we bring that in, we're going to get now the integral over r plus, another integral over r plus, and now we're going to have f times h, so f of phi times h of gamma, now we're going to have e to the minus phi gamma, and then we're going to have a d gamma and a d phi. All right, so now we have this expression right now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be interchanging these two integrals right here. And um, you need to show that everything converges nicely and whatsoever using Forbini's theorem. But I'm not gonna go through any of that stuff in this video. We're just going to interchange these two integrals without any restriction. So if we do that, we're just simply going to change these variables around because our bounds of the integrals are the exact same thing. So now we're going to be integrating with d phi first and then our d gamma. All right, and where can we go from here? Now, this inner integral right here is with respects to phi, which means that everything with respects to gamma is just like any other constant and that can just get out of the integral pretty much. So this h of gamma right here, that's with respects to gamma. So let's bring that out to the outside of the inner integral. So now we have the integral over r plus in school r plus we're going to still have our f of phi and now 
This is going to come out to the back. And now I'm going to pull this out to the back. So now we just have e to the minus. And I'm going to switch the order of these a little bit actually. So now we have phi and then gamma right here just to make things a bit clearer and then we still have our d phi and then we have this function at h of gamma so this is multiplied by h of gamma and then we have our d gamma on the very outside like so all right and notice this integral right here that's actually another Laplace transform but this is actually the Laplace transform of f of phi into our new variable gamma so notice this is different to where was it this line these two lines right here where our laplace transform was taking gamma into phi but now we're taking phi into gamma so now this is going to give us the integral over r plus this thing right here that's exactly the laplace transform of our f of phi and our new variable is going to be this gamma right here remember our integration variable disappears when we integrate so this is going to be in terms of our gamma and now we have our h of gamma right here so h of gamma and then our d gamma on the very end and now notice the nice thing is is that this integral is a well first of all it's one in school only, unlike these double in schools, but um, everything is with respects to gamma, which is quite nice. And now remember back to the substitution we had at the very start, our h of gamma is the inverse Laplace transform of g of phi with respects to gamma. And we can plug it in to this integral right here. So now this is going to give us the integral over r plus of the Laplace transform of f of phi with respects to gamma and our h right here that's exactly the inverse laplace transform of g of phi and this is with respects to our new variable gamma and we have a d gamma hanging off the ends and yeah that is basically the whole entire proof right there notice we have the laplace transform of f and we have the inverse Laplace transform of G. And that's basically what we had in this first line right here. Laplace transform of F, inverse Laplace transform G, except in this line right here, um, I've just kind of compacted things a little bit so you don't have squiggly brackets and variables flying around anywhere. But uh, really, these variables are just kind of like dummy variables. You can interchange them with X's because these integrals are gonna evaluate to some real number in the end anyways. So you don't need to worry about variables or anything. So yeah, this is quite quite a nice result actually. You can rewrite a lot of improper integrals with this actually. Um, I'll be going over one specific case in the very next uh, video so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that where I'll be destroying one integral um, that I've made several videos about on this channel already. And um, I guess just a quick remark this doesn't always hold especially if this integral diverges in the first place. Um, I'm not sure if this identity holds for all f and g, even if this integral from the very start converges. But yeah, I haven't looked into too much of the convergent side of things with this identity. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, until next time, have yourselves a wonderful day and I'll see everyone later. Bye bye.